Welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies, and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to perform this cell phone photo manipulation using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.14, which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before I get into that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. You can purchase my GIMP book of layers on Amazon or get it free with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. And you can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So for this tutorial today, I'll be using a combination of this free image from Pixabay and this free image here of a bridge. All you gotta do is click the free download button. I went with the 1920 by 1078 version. And same for this one, I went with the 1920 by 1280. But here is the final result, and this is a pretty simple photo manipulation to create here inside a GIMP. So all I need is the two photos here, some layer masks, and a few other effects to make everything come together. I also performed a second photo manipulation using this technique, and here it is right here. I don't like this one quite as much. I could probably touch up this photo, make it blend a little bit better with the overall composition here but this is just another application of the same photo manipulation technique. All right, so I'll start this tutorial off today by first opening up the image I wanna use for this. So we're gonna go with the cell phone image. And to do that, I'll go to file and you guys can go to open and go to whatever location this photo was downloaded to on your computer. In my case, I'll go to open recent and I'm just going to open up the photo of the phone. So now we need to open up the second photo. So I'm gonna open the second one up as a layer. So I'll go to File, Open as Layers. And I'll just click on the Finish Photo. That's the photo of the bridge I wanna use. So I'll click Open. That will open up my bridge photo as a new layer inside of our existing composition. Let me just change this to Bridge. And I'll change this one to Phone. Hit the Enter key. All right, so coming up to our bridge photo, I'll hit the M key on my keyboard to grab my move tool and I'm actually going to just decrease the opacity a little bit. What I want to do is center up the bridge inside of the phone screen here so I'm just going to center this up based on how I want this composition to look. I'm also looking at the bridge. I want the bridge to overlap with the corner of the image so if I hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom in you can also decrease the opacity a bit more but you can see the edge of the phone screen there and this is overlapping with that. So come back up here, let's turn the opacity back up a little bit. So maybe we'll go with something like right here. Once I've done that, I'm just going to hide this layer for now and I'll come over and grab my lasso tool. So the next thing I wanna do, I'll hold control and zoom in using my mouse wheel is I want to mark off the corners of my phone screen here. So we're gonna mask this out later. So what I'll do is I'll just click near the corner of the phone I'll use the space bar and the mouse to move over to the right a little bit on my image. And I'll come up here and just click again to mark that corner. And I'm gonna scroll down using my mouse wheel to scroll down the image. I'll click right there and now I'll use my space bar and I'll move over to the left with my mouse. Click on this corner here, make sure that I get everything inside of the phone screen. So maybe about right here. And then I'll move up. And I'm just gonna connect these last two points here. So mine's not totally perfect, but for the sake of this tutorial, it'll do. So hold control and zoom out. Once we have the selection area drawn, I'm gonna come over to my paths tab here and come down here. And I'm just gonna click to create a path from the selection. So selection of path. I'll click on that. Now we have a path saved here that goes around the screen of the phone. I'll just hide that for now. And I'll come back over here to our Layers panel. I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that selection area. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Now I'm gonna unhide the bridge layer that we were working with before. So the next step is I wanna use my Paths tool to outline the road part of my bridge and make it appear as if it's a 3D element coming out of the phone. If you're not sure how to use the Paths tool, I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to that subject, so I'll link that to this video. But I'll come over here and grab my Paths tool. You can hit the B key, which stands for Bayesian curve, and 
Now that I have my pass tool selected, I'm going to hold control and zoom in a little bit. So we want to follow the area of the bridge that we want to keep. So whatever elements of this bridge that we want to keep, we're going to make sure to outline with this pass tool. So here is that corner of the screen. So we want to keep our first point of our path inside of that screen. So now I'll come over here to our bridge area, maybe about right there, and click to create my first point. So because this is a pretty smooth line here along the bridge, we shouldn't need too many points with our path. But I'll just click and drag my path. That'll create a nice curve along the bridge. And then I'll use my space bar to move down a bit. If you want to keep this sign, make sure you go around the sign. I'm going to leave it out just for the sake of time. I'll click and drag my pass tool there to match the curve of the road or the curve of the bridge. And I'll just do this down the line here, just creating several points to make sure that I'm following the curvature of the bridge here. If you need to go back, you can always click on a point and just adjust the handles here and that will, hit Control Z, allow you to adjust the curve. And the last point here, I'll come back over here and adjust the handle. Make sure that matches up. So for the next part, I just need to go off the page here for a second. So I'll come back down here. So we're going off the page, coming back around to the top portion of the bridge. And now we're going to perform the same thing. So we're just going to draw a path around the elements of the bridge we want to keep. So in this case, we're going to go just above the handrail here or the guardrail. And if you want, you can also keep these light posts in the picture. But I'm not going to use the pass tool to keep those. I can always use the brush tool to bring those back in once we apply our layer mask. You guys will see what I'm talking about in a minute. And our last point, once again, needs to be inside the screen. So we'll go about right here. That looks pretty good. Now what I'll do is I'll hold control and zoom out with my mouse wheel, use my spacebar to move around a bit. I'm going to hold control and click to create a union between my last point and my first point of my path. So now we have a path here going along the elements of the bridge we want to keep. So now what I want to do is combine the two selection areas that we created. So the path we just drew around the bridge and then the path we drew using the lasso tool around the screen. So we're going to combine these two elements together and that's going to help us create that pop out effect. So I'll come over to my paths tab and I'm going to click on our first path inside this tab, which is the bridge path. And I'll just click to create a selection area from that using the path to selection button here. Then I'll come over to the selection that I drew earlier. So this is of the screen. And in order to combine these two paths into a single selection, I'll hold the shift key and once again, click on the path to selection button. So that creates a single path from our two paths that we drew or a single selection area, I should say. Now I'll come over to the layers panel and we'll come over to our bridge layer, right click and go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask 2, I'll choose selection. This is going to create a layer mask from the selection area we just drew. And then I'll click add and that'll mask everything outside that area. And you can see the shape of the layer mask over here on your layer mask thumbnail. So I'll hit control shift A to deselect that and I'll hit the M key to grab my move tool. If I come over to the bridge layer and I turn the opacity up, here's what this looks like right now. So it's already looking really good. If I wanted to bring the lamp post into this photo or any other details to just try to make this photo stand out a little bit more, uh, just make the final result look a little bit better. All I have to do is use my paint tool on my layer mask and paint back in any of those detailed elements that I want to bring in. So let me show you an example. I'll hold control and zoom in. Let's say I want to bring in these lamp posts. I'll show you guys one and then I'll just fast forward through the other ones. All I'd have to do is come over, control click to disable my layer mask here. That'll bring up all of the elements in my photo. Then I'll come over and grab my paintbrush tool. Make sure my foreground and background colors are set to black and white. You can click this little icon here to do that. And then click this arrow to shift the color to white. And just choose a hard brush for this. You can go with the soft brush if you want. I'm going to go with a hard brush. And I decrease the size all the way to one. So this is a very small brush. Let me actually just increase this to two. And I'll increase my hardness actually. Because right now it was set really low. Let's go with about 90 for now. I'll hold control and zoom in. 
And now what I'll do, and I will revert this back to one, is just paint the portion of the lamppost that I want to keep. So hold control and zoom out a little bit. If you want to be able to see what you're actually working on, you can control click on this and you'll see here are the uh, parts of the lamppost that I've painted so far. So I can just paint this stuff back in here. And if you want to be able to see the lamppost the entire time you're working, you can just come over here, duplicate this layer, and just right click, delete the layer mask, bring this down, and let's just decrease the opacity a little bit here. So this just gives us a little bit better of a roadmap to work with. So now I'll come back up to the layer mask, control click to scroll in a little bit, and now I can paint the elements of the lamppost here, and I can hold the shift key to draw in straight line mode. So we'll come over here, do the same thing. I'll hold control and zoom out. Just fix some of this. So now if I hide this layer, you can see this is what this looks like. So now we have some of the details in here, and as you can tell, that's going to bring up the quality of this work here. I'll hold control and zoom in. I might want to use the straight line mode here, so I'll hold the shift key, draw a straight line. And then I'll hit the X key to switch over to black and just erase some of this right here. Looks a little bit crooked. All right, there we go. So now I'll repeat this for the other lamppost here, but I'm just going to fast forward through this. All right, so I finished painting in some of the details here in our photo, so I've added in the lamppost, and then I also painted in the sign right here just to add a bit more detail. So I'll hold control and zoom all the way out. Next, what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of a linear blur to our image, and that way, as the bridge makes its way towards the corner of the photo, it looks a little bit more realistic, like it has a bit of lens blur around the edges. So to do this, I'll come down to the bridge copy we created, and I'll unhide it and I'm just going to increase the opacity all the way to 100. Then I'll right click on this and go to Add Layer Mask. And under Initialize Layer Mask 2, I'll choose White Full Opacity and click Add. Then I'll make sure I'm clicked on the bridge layer and make sure you're not on the layer mask and come over to Filters, Blur, Linear Motion Blur. And if you're using GIMP 2.10.14, there's this line here that you can drag out and that allows you to just hand adjust this blur. And you may need to come up here and just hide this top layer here. I don't want to add too much blur, so just a little bit. Let's go with about right here, and I'll click OK. Now I'll come over and grab my gradient tool. Make sure I'm on my layer mask, and then I'm just going to click and drag the gradient. And I'm going to make sure that I'm set to linear here. And the gradient, I believe, is set to foreground to background, RGB. And you can adjust this uh, slider here, the midpoint. And that's going to show you how much blur is being applied to this. So I just want the bottom portion of this to have the blur. So I'm going to move this a little bit down. So about right here, and I'll hit the Enter key. So now, obviously, we have a problem. If I show this, you can see parts of the image showing up top here and on the side. So we need to mask that out. And I also need to move this on top of this layer here so that the blur is on top of our original image. So I'm going to fix this problem by creating a layer group here. So I'll just click to create a new layer group. And I'll double click and name this bridge group with the Enter key. Now I'll click and drag both of these inside of the layer group like so. And then what I'll do is I'll right click on the layer mask for the original bridge layer and go to Mask to Selection. 
Then I'll come up top to the bridge group and I'll right click on it and go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask 2, I'll choose selection and click add. Then I'll hit control shift A so now you can see all of that excess over here has been masked out. So now I'll just add the finishing touches to this photo. I'm going to crop it to the aspect ratio I want it at and then I'll add a vignette. So I'll start by coming over here and grabbing my crop tool. And I have the aspect ratio set to fixed and I typed in 1920 colon 1080. And I'll just click and drag this. And I'm just gonna move the crop down and then click once to crop it. Then I'll come over to my layers panel, click to create a new layer. We'll name this vignette, hit the enter key and click and drag this above our original layers here. So I don't want this inside of the layer group. Then I'll come over to filters, light and shadow, vignette. And I can adjust the vignette here and click OK. Just to decrease the strength of that vignette. And there we go. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Click the bell icon and be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also visit any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.